Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for checking it out. So it is Monday after the Midwest Gaming uh, Convention up in Milwaukee, and I am just absolutely exhausted right now still. I like don't even feel like I have the energy to film, <laughs> but I want to film this so I can put the games away. And also, uh, you know, while it's still fresh on my mind, but man, such an amazing show, but I am just wiped out. I'm getting old. I'm getting so old. <sighs> so... Uh, if you're only interested in the pickups, the games that I got from the convention, I will put a timestamp. I will be professional enough to do that, uh, in the description. So you could skip my rambling at the beginning part if you want to. <clears throat> that being said, I just want to start off the video with, uh, some of my thoughts on the show. Uh, and then I'll get into the pickups. So I don't have a lot of experience with uh, conventions. This is only the second one I've gone to. It. In fact, it's the same show just a year later. So I was very excited to go back, uh, but I kind of feel like at this point that I want to check out some smaller sh shows if I can find them. This one is just, it's so big and overwhelming. Even my second year going back in, I'm like, okay, I know what I'm doing now. I know what to expect. I'm going to like, you know, I've, I'm focused. I've got goals, but I uh, just you walk in and it's like there's so much it's like you know stimuli overload and uh yeah it gets to you real quick and it is a huge show i mean not just the vendor uh hall or floor but they've got arcade different arcade rooms set up which is free arcades they had panels going on they've got live music there was like some uh larp larping um all kinds of stuff i think on the first floor there was uh actual uh tabletop games i don't know if they were doing uh dungeons and dragons or warhammer i didn't ever even made it down to the first floor to look at it so yeah all there was just a, a lot though you know the whole thing uh was pretty amazing uh that being said i did have a list of games that i was looking for i will go over those you know as i'm showing the pickups but man it was uh just very easy to get sidetracked and because you know pick up there's so much other stuff uh that being said from my experience this mind you only in midwest game classic two years apart i found it kind of surprising how different the um games available kind of were so last year there was almost no loose like cheap than original nintendo super nintendo that kind of stuff i almost saw none of it and this year, there were tons of booths set up that just had stacks and stacks and boxes. So it was really cool to look through, you know, the, all the Nintendo stuff. That being said, I did. I actually only bought one original Nintendo game. So I'm hoping I make it back next year and that I might actually change my focus and uh, pick up more of that old, old retro, like my childhood stuff. We'll see what, you know, where I'm at in my uh, headspace next year for the show. But it was really cool to see that because I, I watched so many uh, people's videos on other conventions around the country and, they're, you know, oh, there's here's cheap Nintendo games. And they didn't have that last year. This year, there was a ton of it. So that was really cool to see. On the flip side, there wasn't as there was some, but there wasn't as much high end games. Like one example I uh, could give you guys is uh, last year I saw Demon's Crest for the Super Nintendo at least five or six of them complete in box and they were all like right around 250 so i was actually planning on picking it up this year if i saw it for around that price i only saw one complete in box and it was 400 dollars. so skip that uh rule of rose i only saw one uh vendor have it uh yeah some games like that there just wasn't as much high end it was which is not necessarily a bad thing there was a much more affordable games uh at the show which was really cool so I was excited about that. Um, I don't know if it was organized better. It seemed really well organized to me. So props to the people that put the show on because from you know a consumer standpoint, the whole thing was super smooth. We everything was fast and fluid and you know it was open enough where you could move around and check out all these vendors. I mean, it's open for a whole day, and you almost if you really want to go to every vendor and look through their stuff and make sure you're not missing anything you almost need that entire day it's just so big so yeah i had a blast i went with you know th the same three guys i went with last year uh aaron and then alex from return to mother base if you don't watch his channel and then uh emperor fox so uh and i brought my two boys this year we so we had an amazing time i it's so much fun to walk around and 
hang out with other video gamers while you're shopping for video games. It's, it's just super fun. Uh, besides that, I did meet a bunch of other YouTubers. And if any of you guys watch this channel, I just want to say it was awesome to meet all of you. Everybody was so friggin' nice and just friendly. I mean, not that I expected anyone to be anything but that, but it was just really cool. Uh, let's see, who, who can I uh, talk about? Definitely uh, met Brandon. I did connect with him on Discord, so I knew he was going to be there from uh, Just the Gyms. He was super awesome. Uh, I'm glad I got to meet him in person. Uh, Captain Eldera. Chris from uh, Midlife. Uh, or what? I can't. Chris, I'm so sorry. His new channel. He, I want to call him Old Ass Retro Gamer, but his channel name is Midlife Media Crisis, I believe. I, I, if I screw that up, Chris, I'm sorry. He was super cool. Uh, I met the two guys from Gaming Off the Grid. Uh, they were both super friendly. Uh, and then I know I met a couple more. And I can't remember who it is. Obviously, I saw um, John Riggs, John Hancock, Jay from Square Pegs, who I called John, and I felt like an idiot for doing that. So, sorry, Jay. Um, but, yeah, so many YouTubers, like, big and small, and it was so fun to stop and chat with them for a minute and just, like, you know, everybody's there, you know, geeking out, doing video game stuff. So, I had a blast. It is Besides the fact that it costs a lot of money to, you know, travel and stay up there and everything all that incorporated into it besides that it's an absolutely wonderful time and uh, i really hope i make it back next year that's that would be great uh, so okay so i guess that'll be this first part right here if um you don't care about the games i'm going to move into that now uh there's just the, all the pickups from the show uh and then if you're just joining us for the second half uh here's the pickups that i got from midwest gaming classic uh the first thing is this was like a freebie it was just like little erasers I will, won't will take this out of the package. I'll just keep it in here. I don't even know if it's official. I think it is because it has a Nintendo on the front. But, um, yeah, the, the, just a freebie. I didn't even get this. One of my friends uh, that I was with brought, gave it to me. He's like, oh, they were handing them out for free. So that's cool. A little decoration for the game room. All right. The next is uh, I did meet John Riggs, and I got him to sign his hat, his signature rat there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just a big fan of John Riggs and his channel. Uh, so I'm gonna, you know, but this, this is gonna be a great display piece for the video game room. I'm excited I, uh, actually was able to get him to do that. Uh, and then, uh, not purchases, but a couple gifts I got from my friends. Uh, Alex at Return to Mother Base gave me this disc for Secret of Mana for PS4. And he did tell me what this was. I think it was, like, a copies that were given to employees at some place or something. I don't remember, because I'm stupid. But, uh... I actually want to play this game on the PS4, so, well, PS5, hopefully it works on there. And then uh, he gave me an HDMI converter for the PS2. So I got to get my PS2, the fat one, fixed because I can't play it. But uh, I, I do want to upscale because I actually want to be able to record gameplay for PS2, which I can't do yet. And then uh, my other buddy, uh, Emperor Fox, hooked me up. He got uh, gave me three... Uh, 64 games, Bomberman Hero, Glover, which uh, I've never played this, but it looks good. So I actually would like to try that. I don't really ever play the 64 anymore, but I might pop it in. Uh, and then NBA Jam 99. And uh, these actually have the uh, the in-label stickers. I don't think he did that, but wherever he got them from, uh, that's cool that that has those. Oh, Glover did too. He uh, put the manual in there, so that's cool. And then two PS2 games that I didn't have, believe it or not. Uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, Liberty City Stories. I didn't have this one. And Family Guy, the video game. So, you know, not like complete shovelware. That's awesome. Thanks again for that. The last thing he did give me is, because my PS2 is broken, is uh, PS2 Slim. That uh, He says he tested, works fine. Um, he, he didn't have the cords, but I already have the cords, because my PS2 Slim doesn't work. So I already have the cords, I just didn't have a system. So... That works out perfect. Uh, thank you guys both very much for that stuff. I am uh, very happy to have it. All right, and then we'll get into all the, you know, crazy stupid purchases and money that I wasted at the show. I will do the Genesis stuff first. This is one of the few games that was on my list uh, that I actually had on the list last year that I couldn't, I didn't find it all at the show. And then this was sitting right there for a price I wanted to pay. Uh, one thing I didn't say in the first half is, I really felt like the pricing on the vast majority of stuff was much more reasonable this year. I think prices are coming down on a lot of games. I know not all of them, of course, but 
I feel like prices on retro games are getting a little more reasonable, so I was happy to see that. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I had a price range that I was looking to pay for the games on my list, and this was already priced at the low end of that, so perfect. But it's uh, Machin X. This is one I actually want to try out on the uh, <clears throat> Dreamcast. I've heard it's not, like, some people don't think it's the greatest, and the controls are a little weird to get used to, but, uh, yeah, I'm excited to try that. Then I got picked up uh, Dark Wizard in, uh, for the Sega CD. This is complete in box, and it's nice. The only thing it's missing is that foam insert, which is not a big deal to me, but, um, yeah, I am happy to add another, like, I don't know if you'd call it to call it quality some people I don't think like the game either but once again a game I wanted to try for myself and my Sega CD collection up until the beginning I think of this year or late last year the only game I had in the box was Wheel of Fortune so my collection is getting at least a little better now and then this one was another one on my actual list that I found and the you know a vendor was willing to negotiate a little bit so I did get it for a decent price I think if I, uh, the most amount of money I saved compared to buying it off like eBay would be like the eBay fees and shipping. Uh, plus this was like, you know, so I don't know. I probably saved 10 to $15, but it's a game I wanted for the collection. A game I actually want to play, but it's Alicia Dragoon. So uh, very nice uh, pickup for that one. And it is complete. The manual's not perfect, like, but it's not bad at all. A couple of minor bends, but there's no water damage or anything. So uh, very good copy. So yeah, very excited for that one. I will do the uh, PlayStation stuff next, if I can grab it. Uh, I will do the PS2 stuff. Uh, if you guys don't watch my channel on a regular basis, I am a very stupid person, and I'm trying to collect the complete library for the PS2, which... I don't know. It's it's just going to be insane. I picked up, tw I believe, 23 PS2 games at the show, which was kind of only about half of what I was my kind of goal in my head was. And even that, I don't know how I'm ever going to do this whole collection. When I was cleaning up the games uh, last night, taking stickers off, cleaning off, gr uh, you know, grime and everything, I was just looking at all my PS2 games, and I'm like, this is going to just take absolutely forever. I do enjoy the hunt a lot. I love finding even, like, crappy sports titles complete in box, like, at Random Goodwills or whatever it is, but I just, I, in my head, I can't wrap around how long it's actually going to take to finish the setup, so I don't know. It's nuts. But, yeah, I do love finding them, so I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, this whole stack here is just a lot of... I don't want to say shovelware. I don't want to disrespect the games that, that way, but they're not, like, exciting games. So I'm not going to go through each one of them. The vast majority of these were, uh, I found in a $3 bin. So I looked through any games that were, they're all complete in box. That's how I collect PS2. It's got to be complete in box. So any of the ones that were complete, I just started making a pile. Uh, one or two of them I did find in another vendor for, like, 5 to $8. Because they were, like, a little more. Um, I think here, the, like... Go die. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I think this was a five dollar one, and I do think I paid uh, like eight dollars for Robotech Invasion. I don't even know if it's worth that, but it looked cool. The rest of these were like three dollar games. So yeah, that's that. I will show you, um, you know, a, like just a pan across all those. The only four that uh, I paid a little bit more, or you know, more than three dollars or five dollars, but the ones that were like better games are Ring of Red. I just love the art on that. Um, I don't think I've ever played it, but it reminds me kind of like a 3D version of like Advance Wars. So I don't know, that might be fun to check out. Then uh, I got Okage. This is another one like I've never played, but I love the just the artwork on the cover. It reminds me of like, um, like a Tim Burton type thing. So I don't know. We'll try it out someday. But I, yeah, that's a good, I'm happy to add that. This one I found the first night, actually, before the vendor hall was even open. There was like two people selling games up at the front of the uh, arcade room, which is the only thing open on Friday night. But this is Atelier Iris 2, and it was a really good price. It's still sealed. And I think he had li listed for like 25 bucks. So um, yeah, I couldn't turn that down. And then the last one, uh, with, this is a cool find, especially for the price, uh, is The Punisher. 
that's a that's a cool game. That's a probably the best PS2 pickup uh, I got from the convention this year. All right, and then I got uh, two PS3 games. Another uh, Atelier. I'm gonna mess this one up. Ashka and Logi, Logi, Alchemist of the uh, Dusk Sky. So I know sometimes these games go for a bit of money, uh, but once again, I only paid like 25, 30 bucks for it. Uh, and it is com uh, complete too. So, I mean, it's got a really nice manual. So I couldn't couldn't not pick that up. Let's put it that way. And then the last one, I've wanted this for a while because I've never played Journey. Uh, and then this one has the other two games on it. So I grabbed that. I think I paid probably what you would pay on eBay. I think I paid like 20 bucks, but I don't care. Um, it's a game I really want to try. So, and to have the other two games as well, uh, you know, I was happy to help out a vendor there. I know they can't go too cheap because they got to pay for their boosts and everything. So, um, once in a while, I don't mind paying like that kind of price for it. Uh, and then I did get two PS1 games. This one I wasn't looking for, but it was dirt cheap. I think I offered $20 uh, towards the end of the show and they were right away. They didn't even think it. They're like, take, yeah, take it. And it's a uh, Heart of Darkness. That's a, a cool pickup for 20 bucks. Uh, it is complete. It's got the disc and manual, and it did have the second disc in the back here. So, yeah, nice, very clean copy. So, happy for that. Uh, the last one, this one and the first one were on my list uh, for games I was looking for, except for one of my buddies sniped the first one from me, got it for 50 bucks, which is what I wanted to pay for it. Every other one we saw were marked at like 75, 80, and they were not willing to come down. Uh, and the first one you can find, I've seen on eBay sell for 50 bucks. So I wasn't gonna pay more than that, but alas, nobody would sell it to me for that price. Uh, and my buddy just, you know, stole it. You know who you are. I hope you uh, feel terrible about that. But I did find the second one, believe it or not, this one was marked lower than it goes for on uh, eBay and uh, price charting. And the first one is the cheaper game. But anyways, this is Vandal Hearts 2. Uh, I do really like the artwork on that. I feel like I'm getting some bad reflections. Sorry, guys. But yeah, uh, this uh, like a strategy RPG. I got to find the first one now. Thanks a lot, buddy, uh, For before I play this one. But it's, uh, happy to add it to the collection for now. Someday that's a strategy one I want to get to to play. All right, guys. Last deck, I'll try to get through this stuff. Uh, it's all the Nintendo stuff I picked up. First one is Star Fox 64. <clears throat> this was one of my favorite games back in the day, age of 64. I bought some of those plastic clamshells that I kept my games in with uh, manuals. So all my 64 games and manuals are in good shape. However, sometime in the last 20 years of moving around or something happened to it, but I lost the game. I still have the manual in the clamshell thing. But I don't know what happened to the game, and I can never find this for a good price. Even online, like, I always just, like, well, you know, once in a while I would check prices, and they were just more than I wanted to pay for a loose cart. But uh, the guy, for, I think the first vendor I walked up to Saturday morning had it there. Uh, he actually had it in this repro box. And I was, I'm like, oh, man, I'm just looking for a loose cart game. He's like, well, I'll sell you the cart. Uh, I'm like, okay, that's the deal. So we worked out a good price on that. And then he's like, oh, you know what? He's like, just take the box because I don't, he's like, I don't want it if I don't have the game. Uh, all right, I'll probably just display this somewhere uh, in the game room. I'm going to actually put this in the clamshell with its, the manual. This doesn't have anything in it. It's just the box, but that's cool. That's a cool extra. Um, I did pick up two S Super Nintendo games on a whim. They were just super cheap. Uh, and I figured they'd be fun to try out. Uh, first one is Draken. That was a pretty cool find for like, it was like $5. So, well, I mean, I wasn't going to say no. There's like a little tiny, tiny scratch on the label, but I mean, I'm not going to say no to that for uh, a Super Nintendo game. And the second one is a game I've never played. If I remember correctly, is it, um, who, who, somebody did a video on it where they said it's not a good game, but the movie was awesome. So I want to try it out, but it's Cutthroat Island for the Super Nintendo. So I picked those two up. I don't know anything about the game. Sorry. Uh, I did pick up one Nintendo game just because the prices were, like I said, they were so cheap at the show. This was another $5 one. And it's a game I've never owned, never played, but I love the Derpy Dragon on the cover. It's Astanax. So yeah, I will definitely be putting this in to give it a shot. Then uh, we had a competition. I do a competition every year with my friends at the show. We try to, we pick an obscure, goofy game 
and we try to hunt it down. And then I actually won the competition. And then after we, I picked these two up, they were like, no, it has to be the, uh, the Game Boy Advance version of the game, which is total and utter bullshit. I won. But I did buy these regardless because I thought I, you know, had already uh, locked it in. But it's the sweet life of Zack and Cody. And one's Circle of Spies and one's Titan Trouble. So, yeah, I have those now. I still won the competition. I don't care what anyone says. The last uh, DS game I got was uh, Dragon Quest Sentinels of the Starry Sky. Guys, I don't know enough about the Dragon Quest series. I played 11 and I put a video out and I think I hurt people's feelings. But it's a series I do want to explore more. I'm not, like, shutting out. I think my... I think I came across more negative than I actually feel about the game. Because I was just trying to point out things about it that I didn't like as much, I guess. But I guess it came out really bad. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't hate Dragon Quest at all. But I want to give more Dragon Quest games a try. And I got a good price on this one. So, yeah. Another also, you know, these are all complete in bots. If they've got the box. So, it's got all this stuff. I think this even has, like, the registration cards. And, yeah, it's got all the shenanigans in the back. So, yeah, that was cool. I don't remember what I paid, but I think it was at a really good price. Uh, then the last, or I did get a Game Boy Advance game. I got Castlevania Circle of the Moon, and this is another complete in box. I'm not going to take it out. Um, they actually included this, the um, protective box. I don't know. You can see it on there, right, guys? <clears throat> uh, with the cardboard. So that was cool. I, I noticed that at the show, too. A lot more vendors that were selling, uh, like, Nintendo cardboard box games they already had all the games in the protectors. Not every single one, but a way more than last year. So that was cool, because we got to protect these cardboard boxes as long as we can, right? So yeah, that was a cool pickup. Dragon Quest, or sorry, Dragon Quest, shit. Castlevania is one of those series, like, I'm more into the art style and the aesthetics and the, the set pieces, like, where it takes place, than the actual gameplay. They're okay, they're just not my favorite, but it, uh, happy to add that. And then the last game, this was on my list, uh, and I found it for a good price, and it's complete in box. It is Secret Evermore. I'm not going to take it out, because I don't want to deal with all that shenanigans, trying to shove all the manuals and stuff back in, but yeah, very old school uh, action RPG style game that, um, you know, just boosting up my Super Nintendo collection, so I'm happy to get that. Uh, the games that were not or on my list that I just couldn't find a good deal I really want the original Legend of Zelda, the gold card with the, you know, that awesome box. Every box I saw that they, they were already priced at the very top end of what I wanted to pay. And then the boxes were all in really rough shape. So that was kind of a dump, uh, bummer. Uh, I just didn't, I, I'd rather wait until I find a good copy if I'm going to spend top dollar. That and Link to the Past. So those were the two Legend of Zelda games I was looking for. Uh, and Link to the Past, I didn't even really, I saw, I think, one or two. They weren't great shape, and they were just super expensive again. So, or uh, one was missing a map, and the box was, like, really rough. So, I just, I didn't pull the trigger on those. Those are the type of games that will always be available. There's just probably not going to get any cheaper. But I just didn't pick those ones up. Um, so, I'll keep hunting for those. But I did pretty good with my list, the games I wanted to find. That I did find, so I was happy with that. So yeah, guys, that was it. I had an amazing experience. Thank you guys to my friends uh, for going with me and having a good time. All the other YouTubers, you guys were all awesome. It was nice to meet all of you. I wish everybody a good year of game hunting. Uh, you will see me soon enough, guys. Have a good one.